Hello, my name is Tim Clark, founder of Corazon Oilfield Services. Welcome to Coring 101. This is episode 10, Coring Operations and Overview, making up the core barrel and downhaul operations. In this episode, I'm going to talk you through the various stages you'll see during a coring operation. And in the next episode, I will talk about surface handling, which will then be followed by another episode highlighting the different risks that you need to be aware of at different stages in order to maintain core quality. The first stage of any coring operation is one of the most fundamental, checking the equipment. The inner barrel parts, shoe, inner head, etc. should be assembled to ensure the threads screw together, core catchers gauged to ensure correct size, and there should be at least one complete backup swivel assembly and shoe assembly, with plenty of spare bearings. The inner barrels should be checked to see that they are engaged and haven't been deformed or dented in transit with at least a 50% excess of inner barrels in case of jamming or an extension to the coring program. For the outer barrel, the threads need to be checked, lengths measured, and serial numbers recorded. Check the compatibility between lifting subs and elevators. The core heads need to have their threads and cutters checked and ensure the bit breaker fits. The outer barrel should be laid out in the order that it will be lifted to the rig floor. Ideally, there should be two spare outer barrel sections, two primary core heads, and one or more secondary core head. Well control needs to be considered as well. So if the core barrel will be through the BOP during assembly and laydown, a land rig or jackup for example, a spare top sub should be supplied in the event of a well control situation to allow for rapid reaction, minimising time to re-establish the ability to close in a well and circulate. Once the equipment has been checked, a BHA should then be produced reflecting the tool to go below the rotary table, remembering to advise the drill crew to drift the pipe. The core handling equipment should be tested as necessary. Items such as wax baths, saw units, gamma loggers and so on should be tested to ensure they are working efficiently. The deck should be assessed for the most appropriate space to lay out the core processing area to ensure adequate space and minimum exposure to HSC risks while processing is going on. The next big event is to assemble the core barrel and run in hole to start coring. Prior to starting to lift barrel sections to the drill floor, the core crew must make sure all necessary handling tools, the bit breaker, chain tongs and core head are lifted to the rig floor. Also ensure the lifting subs are chain tongue tight and all joint connections are marked with a wide chalk mark. Before beginning operations, a thorough toolbox talk must be held. Coring is an infrequent operation and it's highly likely that the drill crew may never have seen a coring operation before. When everyone is ready, the first barrel section can be lifted up to the rig floor. This should be the bottom section. Lift it to the rig floor, tail it in through the V-door and secure the lifting sub in the elevators. Lift the barrel into the vertical position over the hole, ensuring the hole cover is in place. Make up the core head to the outer barrel by threading the core head onto the core barrel assembly and fitting the bit breaker. Remove the hole cover, position the bit breaker plate and lower the core barrel until the bit breaker is secured within the bit breaker plate. Make the core head up to the recommended torque using the rig tongs. Lift the assembly and remove the bit breaker and bit breaker plate. The first section of core barrel can be then lowered into the hole. Secure the core barrel and the rotary table at a comfortable working height using the slips and dog collar. The lifting sub can now be removed and laid to one side. Lift the next outer barrel section to the rig floor and secure in the elevators. Lift to the vertical position, carefully lower the pin connection the new outer barrel into the box connection of the section core barrel secured in the rotary table. Ensure the weight is slackened off the elevator sub and screw the two sections together using chain tongs. Then make up the loose connection to the recommended torque using the rig tongs. Continue to repeat this process until the complete outer barrel is assembled. Now it is time to start assembling the inner barrel. Run the rig floor winch through the elevator to help centralise the inner barrels over the outer barrel. Lower the winch line down to the catwalk and pick up the first inner barrel. This should be the one with the shoe assembly on the bottom and lift it up to the rig floor. Lower the inner barrel into the outer barrel until about two feet is visible above the outer barrel. Secure the inner barrel in position using an inner barrel clamp. Detach the winch line and lower it down to the catwalk to pick up the next inner barrel. Lift the next inner barrel into position above the previous inner barrel section and make up the connection with pipe wrenches. Remove the inner barrel clamp from the bottom section of the inner barrel and lower the assembly into the outer barrel until approximately two feet of inner barrel is visible above the outer barrel stump. Secure the assembly in position again with the inner barrel clamp and continue to repeat this process until the inner barrel is completely made up. Add the gyro head to the assembly, making sure necessary space out is carried out, taking into account thermal expansion and the kind of formation that will be cored when calculating the space out. Finish make up the outer barrel by adding any slick subs and the top sub. If the derrick is tall enough to allow it, lift the barrel out of the hole to check the space out in the throat of the core head. Now finish making up the rest of the BHA by adding circ subs, float subs, drill colours, etc. and start to run in the hole. 
When running in a hole, it is advised to fill the drill pipe every 10 to 15 stands, break circulation to remove trapped air, and then circulate for 5 minutes. Maximum circulation rates will be advised by the coring personnel depending on their equipment. Also break circulation at the shoe and pump through into open hole. At this point, it is usual for the core hand to come back to the drill floor and be on the drill floor for open hole section. Wash and ream the last two stands to bottom, approximately 30 RPM and a flow rate as advised by the core hand. Tag bottom without rotation. Once bottom is confirmed, lift up to approximately 4 to 5 feet off bottom and conduct to bottoms up. Take off bottom parameters as advised by the core hand. To start coring, drop the coring ball and pump it down until seating is confirmed. Turn pumps to coring rate, start rotation at the lower end of the coring rates, usually around 60 RPM, and go down to bottom. Start coring with a low weight on bit, usually around 2 to 3 tons, but this will be advised by the core hand. Once the bit is patterned in, and the near bit stabilizer is bedded into the new hole. Parameters such as weight and bit and RPM can be adjusted to optimize the rate of penetration. It is advised to keep the flow rate steady unless absolutely necessary. Continue coring until the core barrel is full or coring rigging is terminated for any other reason, for example jamming. To terminate coring, stop rotation and stop pumps. Lift the string up to neutral weight, then continue lifting off bottom slowly to engage the core catcher. Keep lifting until the core breaks. Record the overpull necessary to break the core. Now it is time to pull out with the core barrel. In order to preserve core quality, a strict trip out schedule needs to be followed that slows down in stages as the core gets near the surface. This is to prevent damage from rapid depressurization. Particular care needs to be taken around the bubble point. Care should also be taken by the rig crew when setting and removing the slips during the trip out so as not to shock the core and induce structural damage. If possible, the core barrel should not be rotated on the way out, but if it must be done, then a low RPM, 30 or less, should be used when reaming if it is required to get out the hole. Once the core barrel is on surface and screwed in the rotary table, the recovery of the core can begin, but that will be covered in the next episode. Thanks for listening, and before I go, I'd just like to say, if you've enjoyed this video, then please feel free to share it, subscribe to my channel, and also visit corazonoil.co.uk using the links that have appeared on screen.